Hi and welcome back. Today, we are going to talk about a very peculiar star that isn't exactly a star, but it is too big to be a planet, so what is it? This kind of object is called a brown dwarf. It formed the same way that the sun did from a cloud of dust, but it didn't get enough mass to start fusion, and if it doesn't fuse materials, it isn't considered a normal star. If it's very close to a star, why is it called a brown dwarf? Stars can be brown. Actually, they are black and small, but the name Black Dwarf is already taken for another interstellar object. So, Jill Tarter, a scientist who worked on aliens, dubbed it a brown dwarf and the name stuck. But brown dwarfs aren't only black, they can also be magenta. Why? Because brown dwarfs have methane and even water molecules, well, steam. These molecules are very picky about what colors they absorb and which they don't. In some brown dwarfs, red light is more blocked than blue light, so the dwarf appears magenta. Well, if brown dwarfs are mostly black, how do we know that they are there? We know because they release a lot of light in the infrared, invisible light that is less energetic than visible light. But every star emits infrared light, although not nearly as much as brown dwarfs. Brown dwarfs also have another weird characteristic. Unlike normal stars, brown dwarfs have big stashes of lithium that normal stars use in their early lives. But brown dwarfs don't use their lithium supply, so they are different. This provided a test to see whether low-mass stars were brown dwarfs or not. But what would happen if we add more mass to a brown dwarf? Weirdly enough, it wouldn't get bigger. It would stay the same mass, but it would be much denser. So still no fusion. In the previous video, Sprinkles in the Night Sky, we mentioned that the OBAFJKM classification system, we later added L, T, and Y because of a peculiar star. The brown dwarf is that peculiar star. Why? To answer that question, we need to go back into time for a little bit. Back in 1960, astronomers were finally getting their heads around stars, devising equations based on their observations. Then an exciting question surfaced. How would a substellar object look like and function? And so the hunt was on, and in 1988, they found a very low-mass star in the Pleiades cluster. Its name was Potato 1. But this wasn't truly a brown dwarf, because it had enough mass to initiate fusion. But a new classification letter was formed, L, because Potato 1 was even cooler than an M star. After that, astronomers found out that Gliese 229 had a faint companion, Gliese 229 b. Gliese 229b was clearly a substellar object and lithium was found in its spectrum. Finally, a true brown dwarf. But Gliese 229b was even cooler than Potato 1, so a new classification was formed. So, T dwarfs became a new classification of stars. Again. After that, NASA launched a new telescope, WISE, to scan the sky for infrared light. Thousands of brown dwarfs were found and some of them were even cooler than T dwarfs, so we needed to add another classification yet again, Y dwarfs. Brown dwarfs are weird substellar objects, but they are exciting and have expanded our knowledge of stars. Thank you so much for watching, I hope you enjoyed the video, and that next time you hear about brown dwarfs, you will know that they are actually not brown. Bye!